Hi, thank you for joining us today. In today's presentation, I'm hoping to give you an overview of Aegis, which is our main data collection tool. So let's begin by looking at how we can change the way you collect, process, and transfer data for financial consolidation. Here are some difficulties you might have if you're still manually distributing and collecting spreadsheets. As you know, there's a higher risk of security issues and version control issues. In addition, it's saving a precious time by frequent emails and incomplete manual data check. Let's take a look at the downside of it from the parent company's perspective. Usually, after subsidiaries submit the data, the parent company needs to execute the data consistency checks all again. Even after that, there is always a possibility of human errors while updating the consolidated financial statements manually. Now, let me explain how Aegis can solve these problems. By using Aegis, you can make your subsidiaries directly input the data into your database from their Microsoft Excel interface. As the users continue to input the data from their Microsoft Excel screen, it's easy to maintain the flexibility of the format by fully leveraging Excel's familiar features. Also, you can apply the standardized data consistency checks all throughout the group companies by simply selecting the check items provided by Diva system. Or you can even register some customized data checks to meet your specific requirements. Now, what you need to do is just effortlessly track all activities of data collection process. If for some more time to focus on strategy and analysis from unified data management and enables you to standardize the work process and documents. Here, this is a simple screen of Aegis data collection. You can create your own data entry screen for non-ledger data, notes for financial statements, and statistics in any way, shape, or form from an Excel worksheet. In addition, you can fully leverage almost all of the features within Excel. For example, you will see there are customized data check items listed here. To make it work, an Excel formula is inserted here to get the check result. Data consistency checks made by combining Excel features and easiest features will help users submit the correct information only. You can customize the error message and which specific cell to jump to for each check. In the same way, you can make some fields mandatory so users can leave them blank and save the data. And uh, we'll talk about that more in a little bit. If you take a look at the beginning column of the screen, you will see the ending balances of the previous period are automatically loaded in the mapping area of your choice. This is how Aegis is different than our competitors Excel add-in data collection tools. In general, our competitors tools are available for data entry only, while Aegis is also available for data retrieval for reference. Usually, our customers use this function while entering the data to compare the actual data with the budget data or with the actual data in the previous period. And this section is data input area, and these columns are for non-standard data that are originally inserted to the layout to suit your needs. In this screen, for example, there is a difference column to compare the previous period and current period, and year-on-year -year rate to calculate the ratio, and remarks where you can input the comments when the difference is too big and it needs explanation. Now, let me move on to the whole process of data collection using Aegis. So, to begin with, the administrator of the parent company activates the data collection screen in Diva system. And then, step one, the person in charge of data entry in subsidiary inputs the data and executes the data consistency check. By executing the check, uh, you can see if you have input the data correctly according to the accounting standards. Once you complete the data entry and there is no error in the check results, you can submit it to the person in charge of data approval. The next step, the person in charge of data approval approves or rejects the submitted data. If rejected, it goes back to step one. 
If it's approvable, you can submit the data to the parent company. Here, at the final step, the administrator of the parent company checks the input status of each subsidiary and locks the submitted data to prevent further modification. In this demo, I'll show you how Aegis Data Consistency Check works. Let's start with progress management at the upper right corner here, where you can track all activities of data collection process. Here, I'm going to select the financial statement, which I'm going to use as an example today. As you can see right here, there are five companies to input the data, and three of them have not input any data yet. If you take a look at the approval status right here, uh, the data of one company have been approved out of five companies. If you click on the plus button right here, you can see the details of data input status of each company. Here for company B, we have four errors, zero warning, zero normal, and its data have not been approved yet. Here, I'll open the Aegis file for non-consolidated financial statement to complete the data input today. Here, in this cell, E12, I've inserted a formula in advance to display error if the debits and credits are not in balance. For now, the debits and credits are balanced, so OK is displayed. To see if this formula works properly, I'll just enter 0 for account receivable trade and make it unbalanced. So as you can see right here, error is displayed in the check result. If I just save it the way it is, then this error message will pop up. The reason why the error message pops up if I try to save the data with errors uh, is because by using Aegis, I have designated the cell right here to be considered when deciding whether to save the data or not. If you take a look at the check result, you will know which sets and cells to fix and what's wrong with the data. So let me fix the error by putting back the data the way it was. Then I'll save it again and the error message won't pop up this time. This way you can save the data into the database right from an Excel interface. So this screen is for executing data consistency checks between data tables. The difference between the data consistency check we have just done in the Excel screen and this one is that the one from the Excel validates the data inside the screen while this one can validate the data between data tables. For example, there is a um, amount check between non-consolidated financial statements and intercompany transaction. This one is to confirm that the amount of each account input in the intercompany transaction screen does not exceed the amount input in the non-consolidated financial statements. For now, the check results are all errors because the necessary data validation checks haven't been executed yet. Now, let's execute the validation check to see if the data we have just input still makes sense when considering the data in other data tables. Here, I'll select all the check items and execute the validation check. Now, the error icons are now all turned green, which means there is no error. Here, there are three kinds of patterns to load the list of data input status for each screen. Under Approvable category, there are screens that are not approved yet. Under cancelable category, there are screens that are approved already and available to cancel if necessary. And by selecting approval status, you can see the overall status of the data input process and check which ones are approved 
and which ones are not approved yet. Now, let me approve the data which I have just input via Excel data entry sheet and execute the data validation check. So I will check the box and click approve from the menu tab. And that's about it. Now let's go back to progress management again. Since company based data have just been approved, there are two companies approved out of five companies now. I'll click on the plus button to see the details on each item. For non-consolidated financial statements screen, now we have zero error, zero warning, five normal, and it's approved. So that brings us to the end of my demonstration today. Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions or would like to know more, please contact us via email in the description below, and I'll be pleased to answer them.